when the radiologists scanned him to assess the, the nature of the breakage, they found um, an extraordinary uh, legacy of the First World War um, within his leg, still there. Um, gentlemen, and this extraordinary object shows what went on within the gentleman's leg. And it was these fracture plates that he'd had after he was injured, um, shot in a communication trench in 1915. He came back, he was treated at the battlefield and then came back and was um, fell under the care of the long-term treatment at U University College Hospital where these plates were installed and then for 68 years he lived with them within his leg. And you can even see just a small trace of his original bone still attached to the screws there. And they'd seen large-scale injuries in um, industrial uh, 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 situations like the Manchester Ship Canal where you're getting hundreds of orthopaedic injuries and they'd seen uh, large-scale military casualties in the Boer War but the Great War and the the trench warfare brings something that's just qualitatively and quantitatively entirely different. Any uh, explosion, any gunshot wound isn't going to uh, generate a nice, neat, um, single fracture. It's going to produce what they call a compound fracture, multiple um, breaks in the bone or the bone entirely shattered. And so established uh, techniques of splinting um, weren't terribly effective. Guidance at the beginning of the war was simply to strap the rifle um, to the soldier's leg and, and stretch them out of there. This meant that the uh, leg was stretched out um, and kept um, in suspension almost and could be transported because if the uh, leg isn't effectively uh, splinted during transport it's going to generate incredible pain, it's going to generate more puncture wounds, it's going to um, generate more infection. Then if you could do a quick Thank you. 